Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a rather interesting solid state drive from a company called Orico. This is their 40 gigabit per second USB 4 drive. And because this is running on the 40 gigabit USB 4 standard, it's also compatible with older Thunderbolt 3 equipped PCs and of course Thunderbolt 4 equipped PCs which means that this will perform much faster than many of the USB SSDs that we've looked at in the past. But there are some complexities, of course, with USB, which we will also talk about in this review. This is not a do-it-yourself kit. It is a fully assembled product. So you take it out of the box and plug it in. And it's based on this cool Mondrian art style here that you can see. And we'll be taking a closer look at the performance of this drive in just a second. But I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Orico. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this drive is all about. Now, the price point on this is $349. I was surprised by how much this drive costs, especially when you compare it to some of the USB drives you can buy from Samsung and SanDisk. Typically, a Thunderbolt drive has a higher price premium, but this is not a Thunderbolt drive. It's a USB 4 drive, yet it is priced at Thunderbolt prices. Now, you have to make sure that your computer can run at 40 gigabits with this drive. Otherwise, you're spending a lot of money on nothing. And I wanted to pull up a chart here that I found from Wikipedia just to give you an idea as to what is required on a USB 4 connection versus what is optional. So as you'll note there on the second row, 20 gigabits per second USB 4 is a requirement for all USB 4 labeled computers, but 40 gigabits is optional. So it's entirely possible that your USB 4 equipped PC cannot handle the full speed that you're paying for with this drive. So you do want to make sure that your computer is compatible with the 40 gigabit per second speed before you pick this up. Otherwise, your performance isn't going to be all that much better than a USB 3.2 drive that will cost significantly less. And a little later in the video, I'll show you a chart with some comparatives so you can see how this performs versus a regular USB 3.2 SSD. Now, if you have a Thunderbolt 3 or 4 equipped PC, you will get the full speed out of this drive because Thunderbolt requires 40 gigabit per second transfer rates on any computer that has a Thunderbolt 3 or 4 port. In fact, when you plug this into a PC, it will show up as a Thunderbolt device, not as a USB device. This will also work at full speed with Macs that are equipped with a Thunderbolt 3 or 4 port. Now I'm going to plug the drive into this ThinkPad workstation that's on loan from Lenovo. This has two Thunderbolt 3 ports on board, and as I mentioned, you will see the drive show up as a Thunderbolt device, even though it's labeled as a USB 4 type drive. And this is something you'll see on Thunderbolt 4 and 3 equipped computers. And a lot of the Thunderbolt 4 PCs that I see these days have a port that's labeled Thunderbolt 4 slash USB 4. And so on those PCs like this one, you will see this popping up as a Thunderbolt device, and it looks like it has an Intel controller on board. Now to get the full performance out of this though, there is an additional step. You have to go into your computer management here, select disk drives, and go over to this YC3000 SSD, which is the uh, drives identifier. You wanna go to properties and go over to policies, and click on better performance and then enable write caching. If you don't do this, the drive's performance will be significantly reduced. And there is some risk to enabling this because if you don't eject the drive properly by having Windows eject it before you physically remove it, you could have a risk of data loss, but you don't get the full performance unless you enable this feature. Uh, in full credit to the manufacturer, they do have this step listed in the instruction manual. And if you're not seeing the full performance out of this drive when it's plugged into a Thunderbolt port, this is probably why you're not getting it. On the Mac side, the Mac will automatically enable this mode, but only when the Mac is plugged in, at least in my testing. I found that when the Mac was running with the drive without power connected, it ran at a slower rate than it did when power was connected. So if your Mac isn't performing where you think it might, 
plug the Mac in, and then reinsert the drive and see if that gives you a performance boost. Let's take a look now and see how fast this drive performs. All right, let's take a look now at a basic speed test here. This is the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. Remember, we've got the right caching enabled here. And as you can see, we're doing about 2.2 gigabytes per second on writes and about 2.5 gigabytes per second on reads. I did do a longer run of this test a little earlier, and I found that it was able to maintain its performance even over a long period of time. So it doesn't appear as though it has any thermal throttling, at least none that I could see. You'll see some variation on the write speed, but not much. So it's a very nicely performing drive if you have the right port, like we do on this Thunderbolt equipped PC. But overall, pretty impressive. But you won't get these speeds if you do not enable that write caching feature. I'm going to close out the test here and let's just write a file to it to see how fast that can go here. And as you can see, we're pushing the data over to that drive at about two gigabytes plus per second. And this uh, seven or eight gigabyte file here transferred over very, very quickly. And a little bit earlier, we ran the crystal disk mark test. And as you can see on its sequential reads and writes, it is much quicker than what you might see out of the SanDisk and Samsung USB 3.2 drives. And it's on par with a Thunderbolt drive that Samsung put together a couple of years ago. But let's take a look at the random reads and writes. And as you can see, the drive is also very competitive against the Samsung Thunderbolt drive there, and certainly a lot quicker than what we see out of those USB 3.2 drives below it. But if you plug this drive into a port that doesn't support this 40 gigabit standard, you'll see performance on par with what you might get out of those USB drives. So the type of port that your computer has is going to make a huge difference here with this drive. Now, if you've got one of the USB 4 ports that only supports the 20 gigabit per second standard, you'll likely see about half the data rate when it comes to running those sequential read and write tests and maybe performance in the ballpark of what we see on the randoms. But if you'll note here, when you chop those sequential speeds in half, you're not seeing all that much more performance over the 10 gigabit per second USB-C standard. And the reason is how Thunderbolt works. So although Thunderbolt is 40 gigabits per second, what you get out of Thunderbolt is often not the full 40. And if you take a look at this chart that came from Intel, and you look at the data only portion there at the top, a Thunderbolt connection or a 40 gigabit USB 4 connection can only do about 22 gigabits per second of data in any direction at any given time, which aligns pretty closely with what we saw out of the drive sequential read and write performance on our test PC here. Where you get more bandwidth is when you also have a display connected, for example. So in the case of the maximum total performance here, this drive is actually getting very, very close to it. So the bottom line here is that if you don't have a USB 4 or a Thunderbolt 3 or 4 port on your PC, you'll be paying too much for this drive because it won't really deliver you all that much more performance over a much less expensive USB 3.2 disc. Now let's talk about game consoles for a second. Unfortunately, although this drive is super fast, the Xbox Series S and X and the PS5 do not have ports on board that can take advantage of its speed. So the result is that you can't run the newer PS5 and Xbox Series S and X games off of this drive. It'll run the older games just fine, but not the newer ones. And of course, you can buy a much less expensive portable SSD that can do the same thing. So I am not going to recommend this one for game consoles. So overall, I am pleased with this drive's performance, but I am not so pleased with the price they're charging for it. In fact, you can go out right now and buy a diskless enclosure from the same company, choose the NVMe to go inside of it, and get the very same performance for less money. And it's not all that hard to put one of those devices together. So I would actually recommend going that direction versus buying this one at the moment, at least at its current price point. If the price comes down and becomes more competitive, this is definitely something to think about, especially if you have a Thunderbolt 3 or 4 port or one of the 40 gigabit per second USB 4 ports because the performance is almost maximizing the connection, but the price point 
needs some work. That is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.